So if you've been searching the web on how to use Paramico as an SSH client, I'm sure you've seen tons of different examples. So this video may shed some light on what you're seeing. So in this video, it will demonstrate how to use Paramico as an SSH client to execute a single command. And then examples two through four will demonstrate how to do it using multiple commands. Okay, so before we get cooking here with the examples, what I'd like to do is I'd just like to discuss a little bit about our setup and how we're going to be going about things. So first off, inside of a virtual machine, I've got a Cisco router. And what I've gone and done is I've added an entry here in my host file. So first, let's take a look at that. And when we're doing each example, we're going to be doing it inside of a virtual environment. So what I'd like to do next is to create a folder that will serve as such. So MKDIR, this is going to be called SSH examples. All right, so let's install our virtual environment in here. So it's Python module and VENV and this directory. All right, so when we're doing each example inside of there, the way that we're going to get the script for these is from this folder here. So our first example is going to be for a single command, and then for multiple commands, we're going to see three different examples for those. All right, so now let's access our virtual environment. So I'll do a dot bin activate here. All right, and as we said in the introduction, we're going to be using Paramico. So let's go ahead and install that guy. So we'll do a pip install, and that's going to be Paramico. All right, and the last thing I want to do here is I actually just want to set this as the working directory inside of Visual Studio Code. So to do that, I'm just going to do a code dot. Okay, so example one. So this is our single command example. And when we look at the code here, we can see that there's really not a lot needed to get the output from a device. So when we review the code, we can see up here what we're importing from the module are a couple classes. Down here, we're storing a reference to the class. And that way there we can access these methods within it. The first method up here, this is to disable host key checking. The second one here, this is what we need in order to supply what is needed to establish an SSH connection, right? And then as far as for executing a single command, we're going to use this exec command method. And the command that we're going to execute is going to be show IP and brief. Now, when we hover over this, we can see that we're returned a tuple. And up here, because we're not using these other two, um, we're just supplying an underscore because we don't need those variables. So all we're concerned with is the standard out. So over here, the way that we're going to read that out is we're going to use this read lines. And this is going to throw each line into, you know, a different, I guess you could call it different index in the list, right? So here we're storing that into a list called lines. And down here, we're simply just printing it. All right, so let's actually run this and see how it works. All right, so I'm going to do Python, and then this is going to be example1py. And we can see we get the output. All right, and just to take this one step further, just so that we can compare it with the actual output, let's do an SSH. We'll do an SSH to admin at, and this is going to be R1. And over here, we'll just specify the command that we want to execute, and that's the show IP interface brief command. Okay, so now in these next couple of examples, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to execute multiple commands through an interactive shell. And in each of these examples, I'm going to provide a different way of actually doing things. Now, the reason for these different examples has to do with these two methods down here, send and receive. So what we're going to find out is if we don't have a mechanism in place to receive all of the output, then we're essentially not going to. Now, to start with, if we take a look inside my virtual environment, what I've gone and done is I've replaced example one with example two, and that's what we're viewing right here. Now, the way that we're going to get this interactive shell is with this invoke shell method. And the commands that we're going to run through this shell are shown right here. 
So this first one here, this disables terminal paging so that we can actually get all of the output of the show run. Down here we're looping through the commands and when we first take a look at the send method we can see that what we're supplying is bytes and what we're returned back is an integer. And if we hover over received we can see the reverse. Okay, so let's see what happens when we run this without having a mechanism in place. So we'll do a Python and then that's example two. And what we're going to find is we're only returned a single character. So now in this first example, we're going to see how we can use time so that we can receive everything. So I'm going to do an import and I'm going to import time. And what we're going to add for time down here will just be one second. All right, so I'll save this, and when we rerun this, we're going to see that we get everything. Okay, so now let's analyze time for a second, right? So now this send and receive methods, so this is done so over a network. And what this means is that every single time we run this application, we're going to have some sort of variance in time. Something else to consider here is that when we run a module like this, we're typically running it on a multitude of different devices, right? And these devices can have a variant size and config. Hence, again, more time to actually transfer the data. So we have these variants and times, and what we need to do is we need to adjust it to the slowest one. So then we also have this kind of like this, um, you know, time left on the table, so to speak. So our application isn't performing to its potential. Okay, so now in this example, we're going to see how we can use a third-party module in order to provide us with that mechanism to receive all of the output. So first let's go ahead and install it. So I'm going to do a pip install and what we're going to install here is going to be called paramico expect. So there are many many paramico wrappers and what a wrapper is is it basically extends the functionality of paramico and what we're looking for in this instance here is something that's going to you know be a better mechanism than time. So what we want is we want something that's going to detect when the output is actually finished. So the way that this module is going to do that for us is it's going to use a regular expression match. So now when coming over to the module, starting at the top, we can see that what we're importing is going to be a class. Down here, we're storing a reference to the class. And right here with the expect method, we're going to provide our regular expression match. Now up here as an option, Within the class, we have this timeout value, and what this is associated with is if we don't match over here with expect, then we're going to timeout after two seconds. Now, I intentionally made an error here just so that we can demonstrate this. So let's actually come up here. All right, so let's do a Python, and then this is going to be example 3pi, and we're going to see a timeout. All right, and after a couple seconds, this is going to exit out. All right, so this is something that you need to keep in mind, especially if your prompts have any sort of special characters in it. So, for example, another common one in the networking world with Arista is rather than just appending on, for example, a hashtag, what it goes and does is it adds these kind of these braces here with an S1 and then a hashtag. So in this instance, if you were to provide this um, over here, then you would actually have to escape both of these out. All right, so just keep that in mind when you're, if you're going to use this, this module over here. All right, so we're going to take that. And I'm going to actually remove this right here. All right, and we've got everything corrected. And there's one other thing down the bottom with this. So in order for us to, uh, to see this output, we got this current output over here. And with this, there's also a clean option. And the clean option is supposed to... Um, take off all of the, the prompts, the beginning and the, and the end. And as we're going to see, it doesn't actually clean up everything. So when I ran it without the clean option, there were two prompts at the end. And then with it, it removed just one. So let me actually save this and let's run this. And, and over here, we can actually see the prompt. So now if we analyze the use of this module over here as opposed to time, we can say that this is probably a better way of doing things, right? So this is going to use a regular expression match and this will 
make the performance of our application much, much better. Okay, so now in this last example, we're going to see how we can create our own mechanism. And we're going to make this very similar to the third party module that we just took a look at in the last example. So first on line five, we can see that we're importing regular expressions. And then down on line 29, we're defining our own expect method. Now, the way that this method works here is while we're not matching what we're supplying to ends with over here, and this can either be a single byte string or a list of byte strings, a tuple, um, then what we're going to do is we're just going to keep appending to the string. All right, and we'll keep doing that until we find a match. Once we do that, then we'll return what we've got in the buffer up here. And so first, we're, we're calling this uh, method right here on 42. So we get the initial prompt. And then once we get that prompt, then we loop through the commands. And then down here on 50. So this is kind of, you know, the same functionality that that, um, that, that clean output um, for the third party module was doing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to trim off from the beginning to the first new line or from the prompt to the end of the line. And we'll just replace that with nothing over here. And basically that's it. So let's see how this works. So we're just gonna come up here. I'll do our Python on example four and you're gonna see that we'll get all the output and we remove the prompts. Okay, so now in which example is best? So we took a look at time and we said that our third party module kinda one-upped on that. But when we compare what we just did here to the third party module, I mean, honestly, you know, it's got its pros and cons. So typically, if a module is going to provide you with the functionality, you know, that saying, don't rewrite the wheel or something like that. I mean, that comes to mind, right? But at the same time, you know, you can run into complications when you rely on another module, you know, could be like, you know, whatever they're doing to the data to return it. I mean, you might have to undo some things. I've ran into that uh, quite a few times. Um, and also, you know, there's a lot of options that could be included with a third party module that you don't necessarily need. So that's extra code that that you don't want. Um, so if you can do it this way, you know, create your own module with, uh, you know, with very little sting, then I think this is the, the way to go out of all three options.